Good morning, my friends. Welcome back to GP Outdoors. We're gonna head over to neighbor guys today and keep working on that meadow. We've done a lot of work and it's starting to shape up, but there's still a little bit of work to go. If you remember, we took the uh, CS300 chainsaw, the electric one, got rid of a lot of that brush. We removed some of the boulders and rocks, took the stump bucket out there, got rid of that big maple stump. And we also had the ferris down there to clear out that really tall overgrown grass area. Today, we're gonna head over there with the grapple and help them out. Got a lot of rocks to move and to clear out of that area. And as well, I think I might give the root rate grapple a chance or a try to try to drag it through the dirt there to pick up any roots or rocks below the surface. So I got a little bit of work to do today. Hope you'll stick around with me. Cheers. I've had a lot of folks asking me some questions about our, our climate or our seasonal cycle up here, including, you know, questions about asking me what the difference between black flies and deer flies are, because you know I mention it so often. And of course, you see me applying protection for ticks and mosquitoes, as well as that netted jacket I sometimes have to wear during the summer. So I thought I'd take a few minutes and kind of give you an overview of what we experience here in central Ontario every year. So generally speaking every year, our seasonal cycle kind of goes like this. Winter starts to end, we enter into a winter thaw period, which usually starts somewhere around the beginning to the first or second week of March. That of course leads us into the rainy season, which, you know, is what it is. Lots of rain, lots of wind, kind of takes us through April and into May. And that's when we start to see, generally speaking, warmer temperatures, more sunshine, less precipitation, and that of course brings us mosquitoes and black flies. Surprisingly, that black fly population starts off, you know, one or two days, you start to see the little babies, and literally within days, there are millions of them everywhere. Like the forest is just littered with black flies. Black flies grow, they proliferate, there's literally nights when I can stand on my porch and there's a massive black cloud over here on the east side in the trees, almost like black clouds. There's so many of them and you can hear a huge buzz in the air. It's pretty remarkable some nights. As those black flies proliferate and become numerous, of course, it's great food for the bats, some of the bird species. And then you start to see dragonfly populations starting to grow because of course, our friend the dragonfly eats those nasty little black flies. And of course, with such an abundant food source, that dragonfly population explodes very quickly. And pretty soon there's dragonflies bumping into you everywhere. But it's okay, because I know they're getting rid of those black flies. By around this time of the year, usually around the beginning to the middle of June, those black flies have pretty much dissipated. They're getting eaten up, their numbers start to dwindle, but just as their numbers dwindle, enter the deer fly. <laughs> you just can't win. <laughs> so sure enough, it's like a one-two punch. You go through a period of weeks where you've still got black flies, but your deer fly population is starting to explode. Of course, our friend the dragonfly is still munching them up. The bats are getting fed, the bird species, and of course, the flies are feeding too, on me. As you eventually make it down towards the end of June into the beginning of July, most of the black fly population is pretty much gone. You still get the odd one, but the deer flies still remain. And they'll carry on right through July, probably towards the end of July, beginning of August, and they're more or less dissipated by then as well, all eaten up. And then of course, as you get into August, your dragonfly population starts to drop because of course the food source is not plentiful anymore. Look, boy, you've been busy while I've been taking it easy on the tractor, eh? Oh, I'm planning <laughs> to clean up and take advantage of the grapple being around. Oh, for sure. So, how do you like the little electric saw? Perfect for this kind of work. Yeah. Easy like to that. handle, nice and light. Okay, great. And you know, when you finish a cut, 
the chain is stopped, everything stopped, you can put it down, don't worry about stepping on it. Oh, great. Yeah, I kind of like it. It's pretty handy for this small bush work. Oh. Through all this time, of course, your mosquito populations in the forest have kind of exploded, but they generally stay in the forest until nightfall, right? Because you tend not to have mosquitoes outside in deep, hot, sunny days. They're all hanging out in the forest waiting for you to come in. So up here in this area, probably the best time to be working outside is around the middle of August, right through until we hit the rainy season before the snow in you know, mid to late October. That's the best time for being outside. So what's the difference between the black flies and the deer flies? Well, in my view, here's the difference. You know what a mosquito bite feels like? A black fly bite is kind of a little more than that, but it's, you know, it's not gonna hurt you really bad. You're not gonna cry after you get bitten. And you look down, you know, it's kind of like a, a you know, two times mosquito bite kind of thing, but you get used to it. Deer flies, on the other hand, when they bite you, they take a chunk of skin with them. So it's not uncommon that after a deer fly bites you, you look down and you're bleeding because they, they literally extract skin. Again, you're not gonna cry, but it's a big annoyance, that's for sure. So we're making a lot of progress out here. Guy was right, it's really starting to clean up nice. A lot of folks have talked to me about buying a grapple or they're saying that they're about to get a grapple. And as you guys know, there's a number of different types of designs of different kinds of grapples, which are primarily designed for different specific purposes. Although of course, they can do a whole lot of things generally. This grapple I've got is called a root rake. You can tell by the designs here, are very large tines that are about probably six, seven inches from the main bar. They come down and they're sharpened down to a point. The design of this grapple is such that you should be able to push it down and as a root rake, you push it through the ground just below the surface to help dig up, you know, things like these stumps, roots, small boulders, or any other type of debris to clear it from your land. I don't use it that way very often, as you know, primarily for logging out in the forest, lifting rocks, that kind of thing. But I think we're gonna give it a shot through here been a little while see if we can get rid of some of these stumps and these smaller rocks and get them pushed up to the rock wall Let's try it. so that pretty much that's our season you know, obviously at, once we get into October and we're doing a lot of firewood, a lot less mosquitoes in the forest, we get into a rainy period for a few weeks, which is often sometimes, you know, it's just basically precipitation. So depending on the temperature at that time of year, it's either snow or it's rain. Usually there's a period of rain and then it starts to turn to snow. And that's when we're hoping that woodshed is full and everybody's got heat for the winter time. Hope that helps explain it. Let's get back to grappling.
this guy here, I could tell after I pushed it twice, it's pretty firmly rooted. So definitely a job for the stump bucket. So we'll put that one on the list. But I'm going to start dragging back through here just gently, just below the surface to catch any other surface rocks. This guy does not like rocks below his lawnmower. He wants them all out. <laughs> but then again, that's guy. He doesn't go halfway on anything. If he's doing a job, he does the whole job. Whether I like it or not. Thanks for sticking around. Shaped up really nice guy. Wow. Oh, it's looking great here now. Yeah, no, I really love it. You were right. Clears up this part of the meadow really nice. Really well. And uh, we're great together having a BNL, eh? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Dueling tractors. <laughs> yeah. So what do you figure we got left to do? Well, we've got a couple little stumps to pull. Yeah, so we'll need the stump bucket back one more time. One more time, and I think we can probably in a position where the box blade will smooth it all out. Then we'll get ready for seeding and yeah, she'll look just like the rest of the meadow. I hope. Good stuff. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you know, if only I had a tractor that was kind of part B, part L. <laughs> I think they work well together. I think so too. Thanks so much for sticking around with us today. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit the like button, and if you want to know when we're posting more videos, just click that little bell. Have a wonderful week with your families and a safe week. And most of all, be kind. We'll see you on the next one. Bye now. Cheers.